Hey. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Steven Lagy Gamer here, and we are slowly but surely chipping away at the 2013 Backlog Challenge. Finished my second game of the year that was part of the Backlog. Didn't see the first one's video, which was Nino Kuni. I beat that one, but the video got deleted and just hadn't had a chance to re-record it or anything. But if you want to hear my thoughts on it, you can check out another gaming podcast and hear what we got to say on that. But, I finished my second game so far of the year, and that is Castlevania Lords of Shadow on Xbox 360. Um, and I, I think this is like collector's edition or something that has a art book, a CD, and everything in it. Uh, found this at GameStop used last year and just picked it up because it was like 16 bucks. So, so yeah, I don't know if it's a good deal or not on it, but yeah, Castlevania Lords of Shadow, a game that the last year I tried to start it and get into it, and upon playing some of it and looking up how many chapters and stuff it had, uh, I just when I went to how long it that's. One of my favorite websites to go to is How Long to Beat, so I can look up how long it takes to actually beat a game and see if I actually have time to play a game. And I actually have since logged into that website and started putting in my times too, so I can be a contributor and help people out figure out how long it takes to beat these things. But um, yeah, so all this game could take between 20 and 25 hours to beat, and it did. It took that long to beat. And so I figured I didn't really have time last year to play it. But I did want to make it part of this year's backlog challenge, especially after seeing an Alex return to Mother Base. He said he had played it, and he, he was going through some, kind of the same experience that I did. And I'll explain that when we get into it. But he, yeah, I finally picked it up, and I told people in some comments this was going to be the first 360 game I was going to hit when I hit a 360 backlog game. And it just so happened to be the very next game I wanted to play. So, Castlevania Lord's Shadow. Uh, what's it about? Basically... Without giving too much away, it follows uh, Gabriel Belmont. He's the main character in the game, and I'm not really into the. I don't haven't played a lot of the Castlevania games, so I don't know what the history and stuff is there with uh, the Belmonts and everything. But uh, this is supposed to be like a fresh start, I think, anyways, and not really connected. Uh, you can check and verify that, but I'm not too sure. Anyways, this follows Gabriel Belmont, and it starts off with him. He's part of the Brotherhood of Light, and he's making his way out to this lake and he winds up seeing his uh, dead wife. His dead wife, uh, Marie, tells him, hey, it's you can save the world, uh, you have to take down the Lords of Shadow, and it, it's you can do this, and he winds up running into another guy who's part of the Brotherhood of Light, Light called Zobek, who tells him he is a pure-hearted one, and he can uh, reunite the heavens with the land, and cured the world of all evil, period of all evil, because he is a pure-hearted one, and he can go and he can defeat the Lords of Shadow, get their power, and possibly, well, it said he should be able to bring back his wife from the dead, that he should uh, be able to resurrect her. How that works is there's three Dark Lords in the game that you're pretty much going after to hunt down to kill, and each of them have a piece of a mask, and that mask, once formed, should be able to... Not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you what happens if you get the mask, uh, but his main goal is to go kill these Dark Lords, and then every time you kill one, you kind of get some of their power along with the piece of the mask. So, the main drive of the game is, yes, you're there to purify the world of evil, but his, Gabriel's main driving force is he wants to be able to be with his wife again, bring Marie back from the dead, and just be able to be with her once again. Because that, that's pretty much, you see his emotions and stuff tied to her throughout the whole game. He's constantly thinking about her. That's constantly what's driving him to keep uh, pushing his way through this. But one of the crazy things with the game is he's supposed to be a pure-hearted one, yet he's going through this game. He's starting to do a lot of dark things. And that'll start playing into the game later on. And that's about as much as the story I'll go through. You'll find out why it's called Lord of Shadows about halfway through the game. And that's stuff that you should figure out on your own. So as far as the story, that's all I'll say. But um, games like this, where you really get caught up is in the action. But one of the things that kept me so connecting with the story, when I started playing this game last year, first two or three hours, I just I was not getting hooked into it. It wasn't bringing me in. You know, it does take place in like middle ages, kind of a dark fantasy type setting, which is cool and all. But, uh, I don't know, the story that much wasn't really bringing me in. Okay, he wants to save his wife, wants to cure the world of evil, bobbity bobbity bobbity. We've heard all that stuff before. 
So what could get you hooked into this game? Combat, settings, environment, it all plays a part. And actually as I started playing the game more and more, I really started getting into the game a lot more. And I think it was the same with Alex. I mean, it took some hours for me getting into it. Then I just kept wanting to go back to it, and then it kept driving me to want to finish the game and play it, because I was actually enjoying being in the world and playing the game. But it took a while. It took about four or five hours for me to really start getting into the world and the settings. And how the game, maybe it was how the way the game was set up. Because how the game is set up is, it's set up into several different chapters, and each chapter sometimes has a set amount of stages. Sometimes it could be ten stages, sometimes it could be four Sometimes it's seven. It's very random. And certain parts throughout the game, like I said, it's 20 to 25 hours long. It really felt prolonged. It didn't seem like it really needed to be that long. It was probably eight hours too long. I don't know if it really needed all that in it. And maybe that's what kind of was a downside of it. Just got a little tedious after a while. Felt like I was going through certain levels for no reason. Like, why was this level here? But. One of the great aspects of the game was it is really fun to play because it is an action, like hack and slash game mixed with a lot of platforming. And the measuring stick it seems to be for action hack and slash games these days has got a war. And it pretty much just plays really similar to it. Uh, Gabriel has his main weapon which is his whip, his cross whip. And it's awesome just seeing that whip flail around through the game. And you actually earn experience through the game by defeating enemies. Certain enemies give off a certain amount of experience points. And you can put that to unlocking new combos and special moves that you use with your whip. And there are, there is an overload of moves. And I, I really just forgot all the moves that he has. I just started sticking with XXX, hitting Y for a light attack, a heavy attack, and mixing in some magic here and there. Speaking of magic, that's another one of the main draw points of this game to try to separate it from other action hack and slash games. And that's, you have light magic and dark magic powers that you can combine with the whip or just using special moves using certain powers. Now the light powers, when you have that activated and you hit an enemy, can actually regenerate some of your health. The main thing with the dark magic is it actually does more damage to enemies. So it's really cool how they incorporated both these light and dark magic uh, combinations. And not until the very end game will you start having to really focus on, well, let me switch to dark magic because I'll have an advantage over something that's light. Or let me switch to light so I can have an advantage over something that's dark. You don't really see that till near the end of the game. Which, most of the time while playing through the game, you have your magic meters because you will lose the magic powers while playing throughout the game if you have it activated. I found myself hardly ever activating them until I really got to a boss fight or was low of health because I was always afraid I was going to need to use it and I would never have any. Uh, but most of the time they set up a convenient fountain for you to charge up your like mana pools for those magic powers right before a boss fight or something. And you can also fill up, refill them up throughout the game by, if you keep long chains of combos going without getting hit, uh, you'll start seeing yellow orbs pop throughout the air and you can suck those up and recharge some of your power through that as well. But yeah, the game just has a bunch and ton of moves that you can unlock, special moves. I unlocked every move except there's two more moves that I need to unlock that cost 25000 a piece. I don't even know if they're the last one, but that's a lot of experience points in this game to unlock stuff when the average one's about two to three thousand points to unlock but it, it was a lot of fun just trying to mix and learn new combos but like I said you pretty much just stim your way just stick it to basic X and Y and there are some really good launch attacks which that'd be a tip if you can launch anything in the air it gets you out of a lot of trouble just to fight something in the air than being on the ground where you're surrounded by things but the game is smart enemies will jump in the air and hit you and they'll fly at you in the air that it's not like a dumbed down uh, beat em up type of game. It's they're the enemies are kind of smart in the game, so you're gonna have to dodge and roll. And it has a parry block move to leave your enemies open and vulnerable for a little bit. So the combat really does work in the game. It really is a highlight of the game for me. The only thing with it is, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. A lot of times when you're leveling up and going through a game, you'll feel overpowered sometimes in these action games, and you're just hacking away at certain enemies and killing them in two hits. I think this game does a good job of making you not feel really overpowered near the end of the game. 
it's still taking a lot of hits to down just little mini bosses or even just basic enemy types take a good amount of hits to beat and I was playing through on the easiest difficulty so I can only imagine what it will be like on normal or hard trying to take down just basic enemies but I think it did a good balance of letting you feel like you know what you have all these combos and special moves but it's still going to be a challenge for you another highlight of the game was the uh, platforming you know the camera does get a little iffy in this game at times because you don't have camera control with the right thumbstick it's basically a automatic camera that's going to be in static positions in certain areas and when you're walking down a hallway that veers left or something sometimes you'll turn left and your controller still thinks you're running in a different direction so you'll be running into a wall when you're not wanting to do that it takes a second just let go of the controller start moving again because the camera gets all jibbled up sometimes in areas like that but once you look past those issues the platforming it, it's pretty good. It's it's nothing where it's like hold your hand type of platforming like in Slade where everything's lit up, you're not gonna fall or die. If you miss time a jump or something in this game, you can fall to your death. Uh, they'll kind of get you started by lighting up the first section you need to kind of climb or jump on and from there on you're on your own to figure out what to do. And I think they do a good job of like making it difficult. Some stages were just nothing but platforming and puzzles and those are some pretty fun stages to try to break up the pace with all the action in the game sometimes it was nice to get a little breather, do some platforming and uh, do some puzzles and not have to worry about enemies just following you all the time so it was pretty cool how they broke that up and I did enjoy the platforming segment, especially near the end game they got some really good fun platforming sections so if you're in action platformers then Bob, this is going to be the game for you and the setting and the graphics, I thought they were gorgeous. Uh, a lot of grays and browns and uh, blues and stuff in this game just because of the dark fantasy setting. But I thought they did a great job with the uh, character designs, the vampires, the bosses. Uh, I thought Gabriel's character was really cool when he killed a, uh, a lord or a boss or something and got new pieces of armor attached to him. I just thought they did a great job with the character designs and just the animations and everything I thought were really good in this game a lot of the game is there's no CGI cutscenes or nothing most of it is in game even through the cutscenes I thought they did a fantastic job a lot of stuff's really beautiful uh, one of the stages not to spoil too much you get transformed and you get put in to your small pint size size into a music box and uh, it's got the old school Castlevania music playing in the music box and you're looking outside of it and the person who you transform your small is all sitting there big and moving around in this big world and I just thought they did a good job with just stuff like that with lighting creativity and just the settings and all the different environments you go to in the game and different backdrops and everything they did a really good job in it and I never thought never felt bored in any of the setting areas only thing for me is just I felt like it was too long of a game and I don't know, you just didn't, need, just didn't need to be that long for some reason. But I didn't get bored of the areas I was in. Uh, there were some parts where some chapters are longer than others, and you're like, okay, I'm sick of walking around this gray bland castle for this long. Let's, let's get something going here. But then you'll get put into a graveyard or an awesome, like, uh, one of my favorite parts was this farm. kind of. It's like a farm setting. That's not where you're at, though. You're in the land of the dead. And it's just really cool how they have it set up. But uh, yeah, a lot of creativity in the bosses. The boss fights were amazing. And some of the character designs and everything for the bosses. I know one of the near the end bosses, one of these huge, huge mammoth titan dragons. And there's a couple titans in the game too you fight that feels like you're playing Shadow of the Colossus, but only better controls where you're not always falling off of them. And uh, man, those are some fun, fun boss fights. So if you're in for big, massive boss fights, this game's loaded with boss fights, and they're a lot of fun to fight and take down. Uh, I did replay some of the levels after I beat it just to fight the bosses again because they're that much fun. But yeah, it's uh, the music fit right in with the with the mythology and everything with the game. It just fit in perfect. It played perfectly. The soundtrack I actually have on MP3 player. I do listen to it uh, throughout the work day. Sometimes while driving around in the car, so. Uh, it's a really good soundtrack, beautiful graphics. So yeah, that's about it. If you're really into action hack and slash games, I would highly recommend this one. You know they did announce a second one, Lord of Shadow 2, coming out. And I'm actually really excited for that game now that I've beaten this one and seen where they're going with that game. 
it, it just looks awesome. So if you're into that God of War style type game, this is right up your alley. And I think they do a, I actually enjoyed this one better than God of War 3. I thought this was a great hack and slash game. So if you're into that stuff, be sure to check it out. It's probably really cheap now. It shouldn't cost too much. And you got to get it before the second one comes out so you can enjoy the second one. So anyways, uh, I guess that's about it. So like I said, that was number two out of the backlog done. I'm already working on number three and four as we speak. So hopefully I can get this uh, all these 20 games finished. Well, actually, I know I'm not going to finish tw all 20 because I actually dabbled into one or two of them and I'm not liking them. And I'm not going to finish them. I'm not going to play a game I'm not liking. So but I'll update that at the end of the year. Anyways, I'm moving on to number three and four. Thanks for watching. Lagging out.